is Al Christofferson. It's Monday, uh, July 26th, about three minutes after three. Uh, we got word that there's an algae bloom forming on the east side of Lake Winnipeg. We first used our research vessel, the Mayo, in the summer of 1999, and the ship went up to the north basin of the lake in August and encountered solid algae bloom for over 100 miles. When you see one that uh, covers uh, maybe half of the north basin of the lake back then, uh, it was a shock, absolutely. And that really hit home when we said, yeah, this is a bloom, but it's not a natural bloom. It's something that we as human beings have contributed to as a result of our activities. I'm Robert T. Christensen, commercial fisherman on Lake Winnipeg. We are now fishing three generations. That summer we went out to George's Island. Fishermen were coming in off the lake and their boats were half full of algae. We had to just about shovel it out. This is a tub with holes in it that if you put it in the water, it won't even go down. And this, of course, is in the winter, how our nets came up in the winter. So you can imagine what was moving underneath the ice. This is the snow around it and we're pulling out our nets out of there with no fish in it, of course. We got a whole of television channels to come to Grindstone to have a look at this because we could not get government to listen. Nobody believed me because they said they haven't got the science on it. Then along came Al Christofferson and we got into the rest of it from then on. Uh, I wasn't involved in this. I was working for the federal government at the time. I was miles away in the Canadian Arctic. But Gimli's my hometown and I came back and I happened to turn the TV on and there he was with the camera crew out there saying, look, I've spent my life on the lake, and I've seen algae blooms certainly in the past, but nothing to this extent. Something serious is happening. And as a biologist myself, I said, well, you know, I think he's right. The community of fishers that he's a member of, they are leery that if there are some problems that are, are arising for whatever reason, it may impact the fishery. So these guys were saying to him, well, you better be careful. You know, what are you doing? You're going to cause us trouble. And he had the guts, the courage to say, no, 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 no. In the, if we do nothing about this, it's going to get worse and our fishery is going to suffer ultimately. So I give him great credit for raising the issue. They think that what I am doing to Lake Winnipeg, I'm trying to destroy Lake Winnipeg. Well, making all this noise so they can't sell fish and telling the fish is no good. It is not that. There's nothing wrong with the fish. All I'm worried about, that they do have fish. Lake Winnipeg is the 10th largest freshwater lake in the world by surface area. It's home to and employment to many, many people who live around its shores. There are other uh, resort communities like Winnipeg Beach and, and uh, Grand Beach on the east side of the lake. Commercial fishers uh, number, I think, close to a thousand. Economically, it's very important, uh, but culturally, it's important as well. And spiritually, it's very important to the First Nations people who live around the lake. If we didn't have algae in the lake, we wouldn't have any life in the lake. Algae forms the base of the food chain. Just like the green plants on uh, dry ground use the sun's energy and water and nutrients to produce more green plants, algae does the same thing in the water. Nutrients flow naturally into the lake, run off from the watershed, but the human activity that's taken place over the last number of years has accelerated that input of nutrients into the lake. So the lake is nutrient rich in a sense. And over the last 50 years, it's been getting you know, more and more concentrated. As a result of our activities, we are accelerating the input of nutrients into the lake. They can clog fishermen's nets, and they have been doing that in the last little while. Uh, they can foul swimming beaches. And some of these can produce toxins that can be harmful to people. But the most serious impact that these algae blooms have on the health of the lake, if you will, is when they die and they sink to the bottom and they decompose or rot on the bottom. And the bacteria that are part of the decomposition use up oxygen in the bottom water. So the little creatures that live down there, many of them are very important food for fishes, uh, they get deprived of oxygen and they die. And that's how the lake can be choked, in a sense, or smothered, you know, from the bottom up. 
If you look at the individual's contribution, it doesn't appear to be significant. Uh, we have to go back to the watershed then and the 6.6 .6 million people who live in it, some very far away, some near the Rockies or close to Lake Superior or well down to the United States. They may be contributing by using detergents that still contain phosphates, cottages that have sewer systems that aren't particularly effective. Outhouses is not a good deal. There's no nutrients in, in human waste. There are best management practices that farmers have to recognize and employ to reduce the nutrient input. Cities have to treat their sewage for nutrient removal. Starts with awareness and understanding and a willingness to participate. Then and only then will we start to see some significant improvement in the water quality in Lake Winnipeg. So it's a joint effort. Government, the people, everybody, we're all involved. The lake has been very kind to me and my family. I owe the lake something now. So now I have an opportunity to come back and give back what the lake has given me. None of us can solve the problem by ourselves. But collectively, all of a sudden, you develop some power to do something to, to save this national treasure and protect it for the future. We here for this blink of an eye. I stand here for the time that I've got left. I have a little guy growing up there, which I hope that he does grow up, to be on the water and have the freedom, the freedom to go in the morning and walk down along the shore and bend over and drink water. We are people of habit. And if we can change our habit of how we deal with stuff, then we can do it.